Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. But I am in a beauty YouTuber growth group and we are a bunch of small channels who are supporting each other in our bid to increase our channel awareness so that more people can come join the fun. They're listed in my description box. Once you've watched my videos, I'd be super, super happy if you go and check out one of theirs. Right, today's video is a haul video. Because you see, when you've been sick for a week, and a bit, because of your husband giving you his cold, you have quite a few orders that arrive. And, um, I thought I'd show you what's in the boxes and use some of the things that are in the boxes to produce this, let's face it, fabulous look, which I'm wearing on a Thursday, lunchtime, but if you are the kind of person who tends to wear softer makeup during the day, this would be awesome for a Halloween night out, because let's face it, it is October, we are coming to that stage. So, because this is a haul video, as well as I kind of get ready with me, because you see me apply all the new stuff to my face, it's a bit longer than usual. You get a treat. So, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and relax while I show you what's in those boxes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Um, I've probably already shown you all of this lot, but I've got a little bit, I've had a bit of a mini haul video for you. Um, <laughs> yeah, where I've not been well, <clears throat> I'd ordered a lot of stuff to test, and obviously it's all arrived, but where I've not been well, I haven't been able to use it. Um, that palette's going everywhere. That's more palettes that I need to um, <clears throat> test out. Um, this is the one I've been holding on to the longest. This is the Revolution, helps you if I put it the right way up, Be Very Afraid palette. have swatched this, I've put the swatches in now while I'm battling to open it. It's one of those ones that really does not, does not want to come open. And I'm not going to break my nails doing it. Right, okay, as you can see from those swatches, you have got two pressed glitters in here, which... Gotta be honest, don't know how I feel about that. I'm not a fan of pressed glitters that are this dry. I've got pressed, I've actually got a Prima pressed glitters palette with loads of individual shades in it. Um, but they're a lot, the gel that they're in seems to have a lot more substance than this one does. So this is definitely going to need glitter glue under it. Um, I will admit, I have tried No Sleep, Petrify and Eerie uh, on a makeup look the other day. If I can find the picture that I took, I'll bung that up here now as well. Right, let's start off with my haul. Uh, first item <clears throat> was a whoa, whoa, whoa. No, but I got a lot of requests from people saying, look, we really trust your reviews. It would be awesome if you could pick this particular product up to test. And then uh, the mummy of Sheila Wolf, can't go over how gorgeous that dog is, um, was selling hers. So I've got the Jacqueline Morphe Vault. I have been using this while I've been unwell. Um, I will be doing 
individual videos on each one of these palettes. If there is a specific one that you want to see first, then let me know. I will just show you them very, very quickly in case you are unaware of the colours. can't imagine why you would be. Um, this one is Dark Magic, which is the greens and blues and browns. And then we have Armed and Gorgeous, which is the yellow, orange and green. Which I keep wanting to call Armed and Dangerous, but uh, I think that says more about me than the palette. Then there's Bling Boss, which is the purple one. And then finally, she said trying to put this back in without losing a little bit of ribbon. Um, there is Ring the Alarm, which is the super warm tone. We'll call that the red one. Um, so if there's a specific one of those that you want to see before the others, let me know in the description box below. Winky Lux. Just checking that I'd actually scribbled out my address before I wiggled it round like that. And yes, I had. Thank goodness. Um, take the receipt out. How pretty are the Winky Lux boxes? Look at this. But first, makeup. A really pretty pink um, tissue paper. And I've got two of their lippies here. Now I know what you're thinking, they look really tiny, and yes they do, when you compare them to, um, let me, what have I got over here, I've got a MAC lipstick here, you can see the MAC box is a bit longer, um, I've got Colourpop one here, and that's significantly longer. But these are actually full-sized lipsticks. This first one is a lip velour called Ghosting. That's in this pretty pink box. And it's a gold and silver component with, in, with like engraving on the silver part, Winky Lux on the gold part. Looks like a little capsule. Take that off. Uh, it says on here, lip velour ghosting, so if you lose the box or anything, you know which lipstick it is you're putting on. And as you can see, full size lipstick. Haven't tried this one yet. Will admit, tried the other one yesterday when it arrived. Could not wait. Nice snap closure on that. don't know if you heard that then. But uh, yeah, that's, that's super nice to hear that. And this one, in the, the, the sort of white and rose gold box, is a creamy, dreamy in shade Lec. As in like Dolce de Lec. So, uh, chocolate. Again, looks like a capsule. Again, two different colours. We've got rose gold this end, white this end. Again, on here it says Creamy Dreamies and Lek. And another full size lippy. As you can see, I did actually try the one on yesterday. That feels like butter when you put it on your lips. It is so light and so soft. It feels more like a lip balm than a lipstick. Um, so, yay. Can't wait to play with those. Right. <clears throat> Super drug. They always send such huge boxes, don't they? Um, I've got this vitamin E skincare pack with a gentle oatmeal exfoliator, an all over body cream, and a natural facial sponge, which you can see there. I hope. I picked up another Dove body wash. This is purely pampering and it's coconut milk and jasmine pearls. 
there you go. Trying to get this so you can actually read this. It's a bit of an art, it's got to be said. Uh, Colgate Charcoal Lipstick. Uh, lipstick Toothpaste. I need more coffee, folks. I genuinely need more coffee. These quarter to five starts in the morning where hubby's on an earlier, killing me. Right, uh, like I was saying, this is a charcoal toothpaste from Colgate. I did actually try that this morning. Um, I insert a picture here uh, of the brush and you can see that the toothpaste is actually a gunmetal grey with a white stripe, which is actually quite pretty. Uh, I have got a chocolate orange self-heating mask. And anybody who knows me knows that I have a little bit of a thing about chocolate oranges. So the fact that this smells like that and it warms up. And I've got an unwanted visitor on my chin just here. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> uh, two of the vitamin E dual phase cleansing oils. Because I'm loving, loving, loving that. So they're constantly going out of stock. So I stocked up and got two because they'll buy one get one half price as well. Uh, MUA Pro Base Smooth and Cool Primer Stick. Uh, instant hydration in a stick. Once applied, this formula leaves a cooling sensation on the skin. Perfect for reducing puffiness and soothing skin. Apply after cleansing, morning and evening. Let's give that a go. And this is Superdrug's own range of makeup called B. And this is their Flawless Silk Foundation, which I picked up, <laughs> hello, pump me slowly. <laughs> I hadn't spotted that bit before. <clears throat> Alrighty, I've got it in shade N1. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, create a healthy, radiant look with B Flawless Silk Foundation. Long lasting, light to medium, buildable coverage with a lightweight feel, dermatologically approved. For best results, apply after your preferred primer. Blend from the centre of your nose outwards to help even skin tone for a silky smooth finish. Doesn't say whether to use a brush or a sponge, so I'll try that with both. Seriously, this huge box, just for those of you, I swear you could have sent it in a box half that size. And then a box, she said opening it because I haven't covered my address on this one yet, from Revolution with their we fight for quality, we fight for speed, we fight for diversity, we fight for you. Um, and the new thing they do now, which is actually quite sweet, the um, delivery note that's inside now has your name on it. On the back it's got all the different brands that they do. But yeah, Angie, you are the revolution, thank you for shopping with us. And then it gives you some product information on the inside. So we've got uh, the Conceal and Define Concealer Super Size and the Foundation. Uh, some of the collabs they've done. Uh, so you've got Imogen, Carme, Emily Noel, Sophie Does Nails. Petra Lovely Hair, uh, Maxine, Kisu and Tammy. And then over here they've got the skincare bit. And this last one is actually perforated so you can actually take that off and just keep that if you need to keep your delivery notes for whatever reason. Uh, Revolution Skincare has arrived and it, I'm not going to show you the other side because it's got my address on it. <clears throat> so in here. Two palettes. You knew there were going to be eyeshadow palettes in here, right? I mean, come on, this is me. So this is Be Passionate About, and it's actually got embossed gold text on the front. And when you open it, it's got a nice mirror. It has got this plastic sleeve, which I will take off when I start to use it, but I've left it across there just for the minute. And this is a very nice, this gives me uh, modern renaissance feelings. But I thought that would be quite nice going into autumn with all the plummy 
mauvey sort of shades. It smells like cardboard, funnily enough. Um, so that's that one. Then there's the Be Crazy About with the holographic text on the front which continues on the inside as well, still that holographic, but this is not raised, this is just screen printed on. Same thing, big mirror, slip of plastic, but this one is a little bit more colourful, as you can see. This green, excite, it, it's got a good name, because it is exciting me as we speak. So, yep, there's that one. Then I've got the Be In Love With um, lip glosses, but these are actually quite opaque for a lip gloss. Now, they haven't given these glosses names that I can see, but as you can see there, there are three separate shades, a very pale pink, uh, a slightly deeper pink, and then a peachy pink. So, yay. I can't show you the next thing that's in here because it's a Christmas present. So I can't get that one out. What I can show you are these two sprays. This is Prep Fix and Glow 3-in-1 Skin Mist. Uh, which is 3-in-1 water-based mist combining long-lasting performance with skin-loving actives. A cocktail of antioxidants and nutrients to help soften and condition whilst also helping neutralise free radicals and combat environmental aggressors. And then this one is Fit Fix Extra Hold Makeup Fixing Spray. So I'm still trying to find the perfect Urban Decay dupe. Slay All Day. The description starts off with Slay All Day. Slay all day with this extra hold setting spray with a lightweight feel that fixes your makeup for long lasting wear, dries down to a matte finish within 60 seconds. So, as I said, I can't show you the other thing in there because that's actually a present for someone for Christmas. But, there's my mini haul. Um, I might give this one a go today. Pop that back in there. Mm. Let's do the Halloween palette because I've had that one the longest. So out of the Vault palettes and out of these two, Be Passionate, which is the mauvey one, and Be Crazy, which is the bright one, let me know which ones of those you want to see first. And I'll probably use the glosses when I use those ones. Um, but I'll try that 3-in-1 spray obviously that will then give me an extra bit of primer. Oh, this is quite hefty. Oh, although I have got this Pro Base. Maybe I'll use that for setting spray. And I'll try this Pro Base today and this foundation. Washed, moisturised, and anti-perspirant it 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 my face because I completely forgot that I'd got this stick in here. Uh, get that plastic off. Get over there in the bin. Right, what does this say? Instant hydration is stick once applied. This formula leaves a cooling sensation on the skin, perfect for reducing puffiness and soothing skin. Apply after cleansing. So it's got a screw off lid there. And then. Is that another? Yep. It's got a plastic cap on it as well, <clears throat> which I quite like. 
doesn't smell of any oh gosh it feels very doesn't smell of anything it feels almost like you're rubbing water but then when you rub your fingers together there is a bit of a grip now does this roll up and then come back down again yes it does right so I can show you how much is in here for five quid that's not bad you actually get quite a lot you watch this not go back down now you watch oh no it is that's good maybe with a little bit of help from pushing down at the top as well right now normally if I'm going to apply anything like this I normally put it underneath the antiperspirant because you can get pilling but let's get you zoomed in a minute and let's just try this oh wow that does feel cold it really feels nice and refreshing I'm just putting this on my t-zone basically the areas that I struggle most with keeping foundation on but wow that feels really nice ooh that does feel nice right, I'm going to wind that back down I'm going to put his little plastic hat back on and then his little screw on lid because I'm guessing the reason it's got a double thing like that is because you don't want that stick to dry out wow I can't get over how that feels I'm just going to gently, as I would do with um, something like Paul Fessional, because I don't want this to pill, I'm just going to push it into my skin. That really does feel cool though. Wow. Okay, that's quite impressive. As always, I have my Apercomon phone case onto which I will put some of this flawless silk foundation so it's got a plastic cover there and then the label itself continues down over the lid so you will be able to tell if yours has been tampered with oh looks like it's a, one of those sort of one of those sort of things on the lid and it's got a pump I like that right so let's best pumps the ones that work come on oh well wow. okay that's that's quite a should we say a loose mixture? <clears throat> Alright, okay. Um, I've got my Shock Miss A sponge here. It is actually clean, it's just stained. Uh, so let's start off with... I think I'll do this side as the sponge. very it's definitely a, a watery or it feels a watery yeah the first it is a water based foundation rather than being silicon um, does it have silicon in it though that's the question Yeah, it has got dimethicone in it though, but it's about four or five down on the ingredient list. So, well, for quite a liquidy foundation, that's not done too bad with a sponge for one one layer, I suppose. I mean, you can certainly see the difference between the two sides. Uh, I'm going to go in with my, this is my Avon brush. It's the same shape as a Real Techniques Expert Face Base brush, if you're wondering. 
um, but it's just the bristles are a little bit softer. So if you've got more mature skin or sensitive skin and you find the real techniques bristles a little bit harsh for you then try this one from um, Avon. They did discontinue it but Sophie who does my nails all of these were done freehand. Look at that goofy bat, vampire bat with a drop of blood on him. Isn't he cute? And that's the ones on this hand, look. And I've even got little fuckers. There you go, little symmetry on the thumb. This side I've got a brains, but I don't know how well that will show up on here. Um, uh, she messaged me, full of joy, because in her latest Avon book, these brushes are back in again. Which is awesome because um, I've got this one and I've got a backup and Sophie's got two and she's going to order two more now just to make sure that she doesn't end up not being able to get them again. Okay, but well, you definitely get a higher coverage with a brush. No two ways about that. The sponge definitely shears it out more. Um, and I think... I don't know if it's me, but this side looks slightly more mattified than this one does. Uh, I'm going to go back in with a brush this side and just see if we can build it up at all. I will do a separate foundation review on this, but obviously this is my whole video, so there won't be check-ins for this today. I'm really hoping this oxidises a bit, because at the moment I've got a bit of a Casper floating head thing going on. Um, so I'm really hoping that it dries down a little bit darker than it first applies. Most super light foundations like this do dry down a shade to half a shade darker so if you are testing <coughs> foundations in store put them on your hand wander around a bit uh, if you can get to some daylight and uh, see how it looks there and then once it's definitely dry and it's been on your hand about half hour you'll have a much better indication of what the final shade will be. Um, there is a difference between oxidisation and dry down. Dry down basically means as the foundation dries <coughs> sorry, still got the remains of husband's cold. Uh, as the foundation dries it does deepen but once it's dry it doesn't deepen any further. Oxidisation is where it continues to deepen throughout the day. Uh, most foundations have a dry down. Um, some have oxidisation. It's just a bit of a hit and miss job as to which one you get really. Well that built up on itself quite nicely. quite pleased with that. It is a silk foundation so I am ever so slightly worried because you know <clears throat> silk foundations already combo skin. Uh, something else that had also arrived new that I completely forgot about was this Revolution Fast Base Concealer in 0.5. Now this, I'm hoping, is going to be as good as their concealer and define. Sorry, let me get the 0 0.5 so they've got the same colour. Mm, I think this one looks slightly pinker. This has got a bit more yellow to it. I think. 
uh, but the design of it has a sponge so it looks like the old Maybelline eye eraser thing so take the lid off Aha, uh -huh. there we go, look, we have concealer, so let's bring you in just a fraction more, just so uh, you can see, now I don't usually blend it in using the sponge on the top, I just apply it with the sponge. Let's get the unwanted residue as well down here. I did have one up on my oh, here we go. I did have one on my forehead. You can tell I've not been well because I tend to only really I'm quite lucky, I tend to only get spots when I've not been well. So let me get this is a Real Techniques Essential Foundation Brush. This is what I like. If I'm using a brush to blend a concealer out, I like to use the foundation brush rather than a concealer brush, simply because it's wider and you're less likely to get streaks when you're blending it. I mean, so far that seems to be blending out okay over this foundation. It doesn't appear to be lifting the foundation at all. If you're wondering why I'm leaving this eye till last, it's because this eye um, has slightly deeper staining on the lid and slightly deeper dark circles so if you just leave your, found, your, your concealer and let it fractionally dry down a bit you do get a wee bit more coverage so that's why I always blend this eye out last to give me the best coverage possible now long term viewers will know that if I use a brush Normally I will straight away grab a face wipe and clean them off but because this is going to be a longer video anyway because I started with the haul and it's kind of a get ready with me as well uh, I don't want to make this ridiculously long because I'm just going to clean these brushes off after I'm done. Okay, um, yeah, that's, that's not bad. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Right, time to set it. Now I use my Coty Air Spun in translucent extra coverage. Warning this is highly scented uh, and it's super finely milled as well, so it tends to go everywhere. Do not wear the top that you're intending to wear out when you're applying your makeup. That's why I've got all of these Bardo tops. I've got about six of them in navy and in black. Um, so that I can use them for filming so there's a bit of continuity between what I'm wearing. Um, and also, because where they've got a wider neck, they're much easier to take off without smudging your makeup. Um, and if they get covered in Coty Airspun, it really doesn't matter because it's not the top I'm wearing out of the house. A little bit of a tip there for you. Um, this is actually one of the Morphe brushes from, um, it's actually a kit, it's 18 quid, it's um, I, I Slay, E-Y-E Slay, um, and you've got five brushes in a, like a little gold pouch for 18 quid, and these ones actually, I know Morphe brushes haven't got a very good name for themselves, these have been great, I mean I've had them just over a year now I'd say, and 
they haven't shared. Uh, I've washed them quite a few times now, so yay. And I'm going to go in, this is a Real Techniques Travel Kabuki. The reason I like this is because you can leave the collar down so this is nice and loose when you pick up your powder and when you're tapping it off. But then when it's time to apply it to my nose, which is the bit that as you know I struggle with the most, I can bring the collar up and it just tightens the bristles together and just really helps with pressing the powder into my nose to try and give it as best a chance as possible of lasting more than a few hours and then I'll just gently sweep any excess on the brush across my eyes that I've already set with the smaller brush. I then go in with this mahoosive, lovely soft brush. This is why I tap off into the lid. And just set the rest of my face. Now you've probably noticed that I'm tapping the powder in. There's a very good reason for that. We've just spent time blending our foundation and our concealer. The last thing we want to do is smudge it when we're applying the powder. So you tap the powder on first to set it. Once you've set it, if you want to add more powder, you can then, if you want to, swipe with it and your foundation shouldn't move because you'd already set it. I do love this Coty Air Spun. Um, it's difficult to get in the UK. Uh, I bought this pot off of a friend of mine that had gone to America, bought a pot, couldn't get on with the smell, um, so I bought it off of her. This does fan fantastically for controlling my oil on my skin through the day. Uh, because I'm going to be using my Winky Lux lipstick today, I thought I'd go in with my Winky Lux bronzer. Now this is their coffee bronzer in the lighter shade Latte. And it smells like freshly ground espresso. If you've got anywhere near you that grinds coffee beans, you know that beautiful rich smell of coffee that you get as you go past? Yeah, that's... The... Oh, I need to zoom you back out a little bit, don't I? I'd zoom in for my eyes. You can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Um, that's the smell that you get from this, which is awesome, especially first thing in the morning. Um, I have done a separate film on where to contour bronze blush. Um, I don't tend to contour much unless I'm feeling particularly puffy, so I tend to do a mixture of the bronze and the contour location with my bronzer, but um, there is a separate video covering, just a mini tutorial, literally just covering um, contour, bronze and blush. So if you wanted to um, a more in-depth tutorial on that, there is one available on my channel. Uh, blush. I will go in, again this is one that I haven't used on screen yet but I've used it a couple of times last week when I've not been well. This is a, another MUA, so like my stick that I used. This is their blushed range. And it looks like the Milani blushes, but it's not Milani brush prices. This is in shade Rose Tea, and it is super pigmented. So I literally, very, very lightly dust that on. 
up to my temples like I always do and just up over my brow for my face shape I found that this is what works best for me in terms of bron uh, blush placement placement? placement? sound like Sean Connery, good lord um, when you're putting blush on you shouldn't really bring it any closer to your nose than a vertical line through the centre of your eye just as a a tip unless you want to look like you've been sunburnt in which case carry it all across your nose like a certain beauty guru who's uh, a little bit temperamental right uh, let's do my eyebrows next I'm using the L'Oreal Brow Expert thank you in shade 107 Cool Brunette it's got a spoolie at one end which is great for just brushing your hairs into semblance of order my uh, brows, like the hair on my head, have a mind of their own and go wherever they want to, not wherever I want them to. And the other end is a twisty up pencil. I always start off with the bottom line, and then I do the top line, and then just really lightly fill it in. My brows are starting to come back now after over plucking of the 90s and medication killed them. Um, so I am starting to get my brows back which is nice. Um, and I just, I prefer a softer look of the pencil. I did do the pomades at one point. And as we all did, got a bit carried away and looked like I've been attacked by a toddler with a sharpie. Um, there you go. So exactly the same thing this side. Just I prefer um, using a pencil. I find it quicker, and I just think it gives a more natural look to the brow. Um, if you haven't got a pencil, you can always use eyeshadow powder. But please remember that will smudge through the day. Unless you set it. And I've got this. It started off clear, but obviously it picks up some of the colour from the um, the brows pencil that you've been putting in. So there's, unfortunately there's nothing you can do. Your brow gel will end up looking like a murky swamp water. Which is why I don't normally show you my brow gel. Unless it's a new one. <laughs> uh, this is... Barry M take a brow shape and define that brow gel and I literally just brush the front bit up and then smooth sorry hiccups through the rest of the brow this is an okay brow gel um, I'm still trying to find one that's as good as the benefit ready set brow which they renamed to 24 hour brow setting gel um, but this is actually quite a nice one it's, it's quite a natural set right so let's grab this Be Very Afraid palette um, and I'm going to go in with uh, which one should I use my blowing brush gone do you ever one of those days when you just cannot find the brush that you are looking at? Oh, I've put it back in the wrong place, that's why. Dull. Um, again, this is another one from that Morphe set. I always hold my brushes right at the very end to put as little pressure as possible on my eye. Now, I'm starting off with a big fluffy blending brush. When I look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile eyelid. So I don't have a hooded eye. I do have very deep set eyes. So I do have some of the problems that people with hooded eyes have where 
and I always get shimmers transferring up onto the upper lid. Thankfully most of the time it's tucked back through in the creases, you don't actually notice it unless I'm winking at you or my eyes are shut. Um, if you don't see all of your mobile lid when you're looking straight forward then you have either a full or a half hooded lid. You can still follow my tutorial, although I'm going to be following the natural curve of my eyeball to put my crease shade down. If you get a flat brush like this, or just a smaller brush, pencil brush, pick up the first shade colour and with your eyes open, just mark where you would need your crease to fall. Now obviously this is going to reduce the space between your crease shade and your brow. Again, because I have deep set eyes, I'm lucky I've got quite a lot of lid space to play with. So there's two ways to get around this. You can either raise your brows when you're applying it and you can see that does actually stretch the brow out, give you a little bit more playing space. If you still feel mm, it's really cramped your space down, instead of starting off with a wide fluffy brush, start off with a more tapered brush. So I'm going to start with this brush and then I'm going to move to this brush. So if you've got a very small space here, you can start with this brush and move to something like this. It, it's pencil brush shaped, but it's a lot looser packed because you can see the actual diameter of the brush that's on your eye, because it comes up to a point, is much smaller than this one. So if you've got a lot of lid space, big blender to small blender. If you haven't got a lot of lid space, small blender to pointed blender. Okay? Hope your day's been well. I do feel terrible. We got all the way through this and I haven't even asked you yet. Um, I think what I'll do is I will I will use the purples in here again, these two, because purples are the most difficult shades to create. And um, I also I want to start, I want to do quite a simple look because again, I don't want this video to be you know, two hours long. So I've picked up colour and I've tapped off on my colour switch. There is an awful lot of kick up in the pan, as you can see. Don't blow it off because we can go back, press our brush into it, pick it up and use it for the rest of the eye so it's not going to get wasted. So we start off at the outside edge of our eye here and we do windscreen wipers backwards and forwards just to lay our crease colour down. Obviously I'm following the shape of my eyeball, you follow wherever you need your crease to be. I'm now going to pick up some of that kick up. Always amuses me how that rhymes. Tap off. And now I'm going to do a little circular movements because where I've lost a lot of weight over the years and I'm 44, my eyelids move a lot. This side I have permanent creasing here, as you can see. From uh, this, I was pulled around an awful lot when I was about five or six at the ophthalmic hospital. So it's great for showing you tiger stripes and how it looks if you don't use a really good blending technique. Um, I've found that this one works best because it does actually move the skin on your eyelid around as you're applying it. So little circular movements from the outside to the inside, and then without taking the brush off of your skin, move it up slightly. Reverse the direction of the brush, bring it back out, and then if you've got space like I have, you can go up again, go back to the original direction, and come back across. Now I like to leave about four or five mils from the lowest part of my brow, or about a brush width, brush handle width, because I, I have very, very straight brows. The only reason it looks like I've got a curve is because I've actually plucked the underside here and I add a brow highlight here because that helps to emphasise what little curve I have got. It also makes the brows look higher which gives a more youthful look to the face. So that's the initial lay down. Yes it's still patchy, we haven't finished blending. What we're now going to do, once we're happy with the amount of pigment on here, we're just going to do very very careful, very short windscreen wipers backwards and forwards and up and down, all the way across the eye just to make sure our blend is seamless. 
Now, I do struggle at the top corners here and here because I don't know if you can see here, I've got the you know sort of diagonal creasing coming through the edges of my brows. So I do struggle a bit um, getting a good blend here and I normally have to pay quite a bit of attention to it. Now, this is literally because of the creasing that I have on my brow. If it is because the pigment in the palette is poor, lots of P's there, not a nice little bit of alliteration, um, I will of course tell you. And uh, if you're wondering whether you can trust my reviews, if you go and have a look at my palette fail video, you'll be able to see. Um, you always get my honest opinion because, partly because I'm shit at lying to be quite honest, I'm just hopeless at it, um, but also the whole point of my channel is to be honest with you, I don't want you going out and buying a palette on my recommendation, I need to find it's crap. Now. I'm going to repeat this whole procedure with this size. So we start off with our windscreen wiper and I can show you now what I was meaning about the tiger stripes. Let's pop a little bit more on so you can actually see that a bit better. Let's just deepen that pigment up a little bit. And you'll see what I mean about where my eye moves. See these tiger stripes at the front here? Now unfortunately, even my little twirly whirly blending doesn't sort that out. I do have to very gently hold my lid out and do this to get rid of those. Uh, do not do this unless you already have this issue and the little circular movements don't work for you either because otherwise you will end up with creasy eyelids and I can assure you they're not a lot of fun to deal with. So. We're now going to do our little helicopters or our sycamore leaves or roundabouts or whatever you want to refer to them as. Uh, <clears throat> oh dear. Well, I haven't filmed for a week. I almost feel like I've forgotten what I'm doing. I'm sort of sitting here thinking, oh yeah, I put my makeup on. And then I suddenly remember I'm meant to be talking to you. So please forgive me if I do go a little bit quiet sometimes, it's literally just, I'm out of the habit of doing this where I haven't filmed for, it's just over a week, thanks to the husband's cold. I know when we got married we agreed that everything that was his was mine and everything that was mine was his and, you know, his sickness and in health and everything, but I really wouldn't have minded if he'd been very selfish and kept the cold to himself. Right now you can see I am struggling a little bit to get this pigment to lay down just here. Um, it didn't do this last time I used the palette, so I think maybe I've got a particularly greasy spot there today, or just my skin doesn't want to play ball. If you get that with you, put some pigment on and just basically tap it into place. We're going to be going over it with a deeper one in a minute anyway, so I'm not overly concerned. But I think it's a combination of where that's really shifting and moving around at the moment. Let's see if I do that. Can I sort the pigment out a little bit better? Hmm. No, I think it's definitely my face not having a not having a very good day with it today. Right. I'm now going to go to the smaller blending brush that I showed you earlier and I'm going to go into Petrify which is the deep purple or the deeper purple I should say and I'm going to initially just stamp that on the outside corner of the eye which does make your vision blow a little bit when you're doing it, so don't panic. If that happens with you, and then pick up a little bit more pigment, tap off, and I'm going to run that through.
through the crease like we did initially with the first colour. But what I'm going to do this time, instead of taking that colour up the eye, I'm still going to do circular movements. I'm going to pick up a little bit more pigment. I'm still going to do circular movements across to the nose. But this time when I reverse the direction, I'm not lifting the brush up. I'm keeping the brush touching that crease line at all times to blend the deeper purple across. And then just give the outer edge a bit of a wiggle. And then. Now, deeper colours. Purples are difficult to uh, cultivate and create anyway. And deeper colours always, always require more blending because there are more pigments in them. I do not speed my blending up, I do not cut my blending out because I want you to see how long it takes you to physically create this eye look. If you are comfortable enough and you just want to see the colours, then by all means hit the widget down there or the three dots I think that are up there if you're on your mobile and just speed me up. I don't mind. Probably sound like a chicken, but hey, it could cheer you up. Right, I'm just going to go back to this first brush that I use without any pigment on it at all. I'm just going to very gently buff where the two purples meet. Because I want to create an absolutely seamless blend. So I started off buffing and then little tiny circles and then back to buffing again. And you can see that now gives you a nice gradient fade up the eye. And hopefully you can see it does give you a lot much more dramatic finish to the look. So I am now, believe it or not, going to repeat that on this side. Now with this side I always get more fallout because the skin on this side moves a lot more. So, yeah, no matter how well I tap off, I always get fallout with this eye. So, yeah, deep joy. Again, windscreen wipers. Again, tiger stripes. Unfortunately, I have to deal with like this. Uh, I'm not overstretching the skin on my eye and I'm not holding it out any longer than I absolutely have to, as you can see. Right. Now let me blend this deeper purple exactly as we did before. Um, I don't cut things out of my tutorials. I want you to be able to see all the way from start to finish. Because um, it used to annoy me. I watched most of my tutorials on my phone and I'd be following along and all of a sudden you'd have to pause it because they'd speed their blending up or they'd go, right, I'm going to do the other half camera and I'll come back. Now, I get why they do this so that they can keep their videos to sort of 15, 20 minutes long. I get it. Um, but when you're learning how to put shadows on, it's really not helpful because you have to keep pausing it and then your screen lock comes on. And then when they say I'm going to do the other way off camera, you've now got to rewind what you've watched and do the whole thing in mirror image. Which when you're learning is not that easy. Um, just going to sweep that fallout away quite quickly because obviously reds and blues and purples, if you get fallout from those colours, do sweep them away quickly because if any colours are going to stain, they will. Back to our first fluffy brush because I want to blend where the two colours meet. So I've got that nice, yeah I'm definitely getting patching here. So it's definitely my skin because it isn't doing it on this eye. I might have to pick up a bit of pigment on this brush actually and just as I'm blending the two together just make sure I'm not losing any of the pigment. There we go. It's looking good. That's really pretty. I do like purples. They can be very difficult to do though, admittedly. Right. Uh, I'm actually going to go in to this 
Oh, that's duochrome. Duochrome? 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 It's sort of duochrome, greeny, ready almost shift to it. I'm going to pick that up on a flat brush like this. It's a So Eco brush, but where I've had it so long and I've washed it so many times, the name's rubbed off, so I'm afraid I can't tell you what it's called, sorry. So just pick up the pigment on the brush. And then using my Obsession Pigment Boost. You can use any spray, really. Uh, you can even just use plain water. But I've got this one specifically for eyeshadows, so wet the brush. And we're just going to apply this to the two thirds of the lid. It doesn't already have pigment on it. So it's it's a this is what I call a soft cut crease because I haven't actually cut the crease. I haven't put concealer or an eyelid primer down to clean the lid up. I'm just relying on the opacity of the pigment to go over the purple, which it has done very nicely. Right, because I don't like to go back in with a wet brush into the pan in case I get hard pan, my tip is I clean it off on here. If you haven't got one of these you can use micropore cloth or um, even a towel or a flannel just to clean your brush with and then I dry it off on my hand to make sure the bristles are and you can see that I'm not getting any pigment coming off so that does prove that those colour switches work um, this isn't a Veramona one it was a dirt cheap one about four quid off of eBay so yeah right I'm going to go back into creepy love the name of this shadow and Pack the pigment onto the brush like I did before. Wet the pigment. And pop it onto the lid. This is actually covering really nicely. I'm going about sort of two thirds of the way along and then angling it. If you can hear that scratching, because of where we live, we've always got mice in the walls. Nothing you can do about it, unfortunately. Thankfully, they tend to stay in the walls. That's what happens when you live with this close to a river, unfortunately had it for years and years and I'm so used to it now I don't even notice it but someone did comment on one of my videos so I just thought I'd clarify that point right so I actually quite like that now I'm going to pick up a little bit of spooked which is this bright orangey red this could be a really big mistake. I might be about to ruin the eye look. Uh, and I'm just going to pop this just under the bottom. Oh, actually, now that's working quite nicely. Just under the bottom lashes. I'm going to go about two thirds of the way along. With this flat brush. These are really good for getting up under the... Again, this is from that eye slay set. Um, the fluffy blender that I used was from the Eye Slay set. The narrow blender is actually a tart one that I got with the um, Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen collab that she did with Tarte that was in that palette. This one is from the Eye Slay thing. And the small one that I used to set the eyes with was also from that eye slay set. Right, going back in with this tart one, I'm going to pick up 
a little bit of no sleep, which is that first lilac that we put down. And very gently, just going to buff along the entire bottom lash line, blending that red along with us. Just to give a bit of cohesion to the look and to soften that bottom line. Now you can put um, colour into your waterline if you want because I have particularly watery eyes um, I tend not to do that. I do sometimes do it for photos uh, you know, if I want to put a picture up on Instagram for example but if I'm going to be wearing the look all day then I tend not to because it just ends up either coming off or clumping up in the corner here and looking like a little black booger, which is not very nice. Little black boogie in the middle of your eye. So, that's the eyes done. Um, I am going to pause you and do my uh, eyeliner off camera, mainly because I end up going off screen a lot when I'm putting my eyeliner on. But I do have uh, a separate tutorial for my eyeliner, so you can actually see how I do my winged liner. Please don't go anywhere. I'll be right back to finish off with a highlight. Hey, I'm back. Okay, I use the Revolution um, Awesome Double Flick Liquid Liner, which has got a thin um, tip at one end for outlining and then a thicker tip for filling in at the other end which is awesome and the mascara is the Rimmel Scandalize Reloaded Waterproof so it's time to highlight now I've had quite a lot of new highlights recently so initially I'm going to go in with this Ofra Nikki Tutorials Glazed Donut for my inner eye highlight because as you can see it packs a bit of a punch it really is a super super blinding highlight which um, I do wear on my cheeks, but I'll be honest, I tend to save it for a night out because it's just so impactful. But, for your inner eye highlight, it's perfect. I'm then going to go in with, this is one of the Becca ones. This is their Light Chaser Highlight in Pearl Flashes Gold. So it's a white base with a gold shift in one of their flying saucer things as you can see I do actually have another better highlight I've got a mini version of opal and just to show you the difference in size there's your standard size there's your mini so not that much smaller actually um, so if you're wondering about whether you want to try a Becca highlight or not then try picking up one of the minis. Um, they're actually really quite good value. This is just a cheap flat brush that I picked up off of eBay years ago. But it's great for inner corner and for getting up under your brow bone, as you can see. Now as you can see, this Becca highlight, it don't muck about. It really doesn't muck about. Pretty, huh? Right, let's see me back out again. I'm trying not to knock my iron brew everywhere. Look, seriously, I've got iron brew here, look, see? Mm. I love me a bit of iron brew. It does make me burp, though. Um, this is a Zoeva 105 Lux Highlight Brush. And we're going to go down the nose. 
adding just a wee bit between the eyes there. Top lip. And chin. And then the fun bit. The cheekbones. Now this is one of those highlights that the more you buff it into the skin, the more beautiful it gets. Um, you put it on initially and you think, oh, that's not got much of a zoom to it. And then as you start buffing it in, you think, actually, that's really pretty. You can leave it like that, but you know me, I am... Um, don't do subtle highlights. So I like to add a little bit more. And by a little bit more, I obviously mean a lot more. You know me. You know what I'm like. Long term viewers will have seen me do this many, many, many times with highlights. Just dust the brush off before I pop it back into my pot. And then I think I'm going to try that Winky Lux lippy that I put on yesterday. This is the uh, Dreamy Creamy, Creamy Dreamies in Lek. Let's zoom you back in. You can see what I mean about how beautifully this goes on. Super soft and creamy. I'm really, really liking the way this looks coming together today. So, let's give this Obsession 3-in-1 Prep Fix and Glow a go. Let's see what the spray is like on it first. Okay, quite aggressive. Move the iron brew out of the way. Don't particularly want this in the iron brew. So, we have... Ooh. <laughs> Smells like... Fruity, it smells like a almost like a peachy melony. Oh, that's quite nice actually. Right, we'll hold this at arm's length and liberally douse our face with it. Most people would stop here. Regular viewers know I'm not most people. I'm a little bit extra and I like. A little bit extra because when I've spent this amount of time making myself look pretty I want it to say it with me stay put you don't have to do the extra if you don't want to hmm. but as we have established a little bit extra. Look at that highlight. Oof. Right, I'm going to pause you while I do something with this mop of a barnet on my head today that doesn't really want to do anything and I will come back for my final thoughts. Stay tuned. And I'm back and as you can see I told you my hair does whatever the heck it wants. I have no control. No control at all. So, first impression on the products that I have used today from my little mini haul. Um, Pro Base really felt cooling. That would be awesome if you're feeling particularly puffy or in the summer if it's a hot day. I can really see this cooling you down. Obviously, I have got no idea how this is going to work in terms of extending the wear of your foundation because 
it's the first time I've used this and it's the first time I've used the foundation so I will continue to use this with other foundations and I can report back to you later on what I think of that. Talking of the foundation, this is the B Perfect Flawless Silk Foundation. Um, now obviously where I've set it, it is kind of a satin matte at the moment. <sighs> Told you my hair does what it wants. Um, I imagine that within an hour or so my oils are going to start breaking through and it will start to become more dewy looking. Um, it feels super light, it built up really well. Um, you definitely get more coverage with a brush than a sponge, but you still get good coverage with a sponge. You can still, you know, if you want a slightly sheerer finish, then use the sponge. If you want to be able to build it up to a more medium, you know, high medium coverage, which is what I've done, then use the brush. Uh, what did I use next? The blush from MUA. Really pretty colour very pigmented go careful with it i've used this a few times uh, it doesn't last as well as the tart blushes do on me but those last ridiculously well anyway it certainly does a good eight nine hours before it starts to fade so that's awesome uh eyeshadow palette now obviously i have used some of these shades before it is the first time i've used that green shade today though and the first time i've used the orange shade um so far, really happy with these. I didn't get an awful lot of fading. If I think on, I'll stick a picture up here somewhere um, of the look that I did with this before, so you can see, you know, how much fading there was throughout the day. Uh, I will use this again. I will try this with the, um, the pressed glitters as well with the glitter glue, and when I do my palette roundup, I'll be able to give you better feedback on how those glitters work uh, highlight stunning let's be honest absolutely gorgeous um, and it's a gold that is light enough for pale skin tones which if you if you are pale with a neutral to cool skin tone you know how difficult it is to get a gold highlight that one actually is one of the few that does work with a skin tone like mine. Uh, the new line, the new concealer, um, so far so good. Again, it feels very lightweight, but then those sponge type concealers don't tend to be as high coverage as, for example, the Conceal and Define or the Revolution Pro. This tends to be a lighter coverage concealer. It's the kind of concealer you can wear if you're not going to wear foundation and it's not going to look too out of place on your face. So, yep, first time using this, so far so good. I will, of course, continue to use it and feed back to you whether I like it or not. Uh, eyeliner, that double-ended one, um, went on smoothly enough. No skipping. Lot good, good pigment. Um, we'll see how it lasts through the day, whether it smudges with my runny eyes. Um, I've used this mascara before, so that's not new. Setting spray. Uh, smells absolutely gorgeous. Again, at the moment, no idea how it will do in terms of extending the wear. But, although it was quite an aggressive spray, it was very fine droplets. So it, it didn't leave like huge dollops of water over my skin, which does happen with some... Um, sprays and you end up with it almost leaving like dots in your foundation so you have to grab a sponge quick and sort of I didn't feel the need to do that with this one so that's good and it dried down really quite quickly I mean, I need, I need, you saw I only did a couple of flicks with the brush on it um, with the brush, with the fan uh, the Winky Lux Lippy I just love these dinky little containers they're beautiful I mean I love the fact that you get a full size lipstick in something this small as well because it's great for fitting in your handbag you know if you're going for a night out and you've not got your usual big handbag that you can fit the kitchen sink in and everything if you've got your little clutch bag this would fit in it absolutely fine um, and you still get a full size lippy and it feels it feels actually like a lip balm it's so moisturising but it's got good opacity obviously I mean I wore this yesterday it's not 
a liquid lipstick. When you eat, it will come off. When you kiss someone, it will come off. It does fade very gracefully, however. You don't end up with that ring around the outside of your mouth so you look like a bit of a clown. Um, so, yeah, and it, obviously being a stick lipstick and being a creamy lipstick, you don't need to take it off to reapply a second layer. So, um, I think that pretty much covers all the new stuff that I used today. Uh, as you can see, you can certainly, these these do build up. You can Anyone that says you can't get pigment out of a Revolution palette isn't trying. Yes, some of them take more work than others. Um, and yes, some of them are designed to be more sheer so that you can have a very sheer wash of colour or you can build them up. I know this was a big problem a lot of people were coming across with the Emily Wants palette which I do want to get, I haven't got it yet. I, I want it but I don't want it because I'm, I much prefer smaller palettes. I, I'm really veering away from large palettes now. Um, but I know uh, some of the problems that a lot of people were encountering with their Emily Wants palette is that they didn't realise that the, the shadows were designed to go on sheer and be built up so that you don't instantly get a huge amount of pigment because Emily Noel, having been in the business for so long, um, she knows that when you're a learner you don't suddenly want a huge amount of pigment because it scares you. Um, but you can definitely, definitely build this up and get good pigment out of it. I will, of course, let you know more updates on how... Oh, sorry, I did do a bit of ASMR for you. Um, I will let you know how the glitters go on that as well. Uh, I think that pretty much covers everything, doesn't it? Yeah, right. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could hit that like button for me. Comment, share, subscribe. When you subscribe, don't forget to ring my bell. Ring my bell and choose all notifications. So you get told every time I upload another one of these videos. And talking about another one of these videos, where are you going? I've got so many more videos you can choose from to watch. And not only do I have more videos, but in the description box below, you'll find a list of other channels, which are some of the ladies from my beauty YouTuber growth group that I'm a member of, who also produce amazing videos. So, if you're one of my OGs and you have watched all of my videos and you're like but Ange you're telling me to go and watch another video and I've seen all of yours if you've seen all of mine why well, don't pop over and see some of theirs instead right all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous now and I'll see you again next time bye for now mm -hmm.